So, hello everyone. This talk is uh, the last one. Talk of the, the best one. Maybe. <laughs> last but not least. Anyway, my accent is the best one accent. <laughs> so, uh, I'll present you a work with uh, Eric Leclerc, the joint work that we uh, conduct in the um, laboratory of um, Burgundy about temporal density of community structure. Uh, so this is a continuation of our previous work. The first uh, presentation of the, this method was done in the 2016 in Amsterdam. Then we published a paper that successfully used our method to analyze uh, some Twitter data. Okay. And now <coughs> I'll present some ameliorations, some, some interesting stuff. So um, this talk will be <laughs> uh, looks like a Jean Daniel uh, visualization for exploration, okay? So I'll present you a method that I think it's good and beautiful and you give a beautiful results and then you can see some patterns, you can find some interesting stuff. So I aim to um, present um, a method to do comprehensible and aesthetic visualization of dynamics of a com community structure. But it's not easy, and we should uh, discuss the existing method also, and uh, modify slightly the existing definitions of community in order to um, give a visualization. So this uh, overview of my talk will start by discussing some classic works. Then we will explain our method in details, and we illustrate using school contact networks from social patterns. So dynamic communities. The classics say us that we can, if we have a graph, you can have some snapshot of graph, and you can run some community detection algorithm in every snapshot, and then try to see how the community um, merges together, how they splits, etc., etc. In the literature, we can find a more beautiful examples of this kind of visualization. For example, Roswell and Bergstrom present. Um, the same, um, the same information using such a flow, flow-like networks. Okay, but unfortunately, uh, it's not easy to use such a method to present a dynamics of community structure when we have a lot of time less time slices or a lot of nodes. Okay, so what do we propose? Our method will be. Um, like inspired by existing um, kind of visualization uh, conducted by Biva Smitro and Lionel Taburi Kamil Roth. So their paper was not about the visualization of the community structure, okay? But I found that um, this particular figure from the paper is very interesting. So here you see the, cal the cars that correspond to the community. Time goes from the left to right, okay? And every row, in the color matrix corresponds to a node. If you take the first node, number zero, you see that this node stays in the same community, the blue one, all the time. Another node jumps from the blue community to orange, blue again, dark, uh, dark brown, etc., etc. Okay, so it's, it's a good example. Why? Because we can see using the one, only one image, what happens during the time with the community structure. So, okay, you don't see um, the links between the nodes, but you, you don't have to. You, the goal is the community structure, so we can forget about links. Okay, then you know, of course we can reconstruct. But um, what happens is uh, many real world networks changes not so drastically, they change smoothly. And if we try to, to use this stuff, of fine, this kind of realization, uh, then you can see that um, the colors changes drastically. And for me, it's not aesthetic. It's not, um, it's not beautiful. Even when the vis vis visualization is not beautiful, um, the people will just not use it, okay? So, we need another, another method. We need to approach the goal. I don't say that, that our method is the ideal one, but I think it's a, a big step towards the goal. So let's ap approach by considering at the beginning only the ego <coughs> local community structure. What does it mean in our context? 
So we have a graph like this one, and we pre-select the node. We can pre-select a set of nodes, okay? So we pre-select uh, here a node U, and then we run some algorithm that gives us the result. I claim that the result uh, in this kind of uh, situation can be uh, considered to um, be um, probability measure defined over the graph. So you, we will use a color to depict the probability. The node U is the center of your community, the prefixed one. So we choose the, this node a priori. Then we run algorithm. And then we see that some nodes are orange. That means that the probability to be in the community of node U for this node is a big one. Some intermediate colors represent intermediate probabilities. And the nodes that are very, very far from the community will be blue. OK? Is it, is it clear? Okay. It's not, uh, not so difficult to see. Uh, and I claim that many algorithms can provide such a community structure. Okay. We don't um, need to cut yet. So we just probability structure, They're just the colors. Okay. For example, eigenvector centrality, Shimalik, from different domains, different kind of algorithms, graph partitioning can be modified slightly to give the same kind of results. We will focus on the personalized page rank. Okay. Why? Because it has been proved in the literature that a personalized page rank can find the good communities in real world networks. So we use this algorithm in particular. But our method can be applied to another algorithms. Okay? But by page rank, we will find instantaneous good communities. How we can visualize the dynamics? First of all, we need to think about our model of dynamic graph. Okay? There is several uh, discrete model of dynamic graphs. Let's focus on the um, link streams from Matteo Latapi group. Okay, the Nicolas can maybe ask some questions. <laughs> so we have interactions over the time. Every line represents a, no a node. Node A, B uh, interacts uh, at time one, okay? And then they interact again at time four, etc., etc. So in this kind of model, the interaction is instantaneous, okay? What we'll do, we can represent um, the interactions as a list of tuples. You have a node, another node, and the interaction time. If we select a pair of nodes A, B, for example, and we filter out all the interactions time, we can plot them over the time axis. Okay? And in some, some cases, there is a lot of interaction during small period. In other period, there is no interactions. Okay? And what we do, we just apply the classical um, kernel-based estimation to derive a smooth version of interaction probability. Okay. Interaction measure. Why we do this? Because maybe in your data you have some errors. Okay. So the smoothing is not only for the visualization, it's also for um, calm down the errors that you can have in your data. Okay. So we can take a first pair of nodes, A, B, perform this algorithm to, uh, to see what happens. Another pair, another pair, and we took all pairs, okay? And then we will cut our time into time slices, like this. Every time slice can be represented as a weighted graph, where the weight between the two nodes, for example, the weight between nodes A, B, is just the mean value of, uh, of this um, smoothed version of uh, of interactions, okay? It means that even in the data, you don't have any interaction in this period. You still will have the, the weight that will be small, okay? Okay, is it, uh, I don't think it's very, uh, so we do this. <laughs> and then for every graph here, we run a personalized page rank, and then we collect the results, okay? How we do this? So if you fix, uh, recall that the node U is a fixed node, okay? Then we have a list of other nodes. If you take a node V, for example, and the time changes from the left to the right, the probability that a node V at the time T, let's say here, is the community, is in the local community of node U, it's a big when you have a red color. It's a small when they have a blue, and it's a orange when there's some intermediate values. Okay. For ev 
another node of the graph, W, you have the same, I'll call it color row. When the times goes from the left to the right and the colors uh, changes, when the probability of being in the community changes, okay? So now we have a one line per nodes in the graph. Okay? And um, the first question, why it's, uh, why it's smooth, why the colors change smoothly? Okay, because it's not so, um, not so direct. Uh, we need to prove some theorems, actually. So th th there is a small theorem. I will not go to the details, of course. But um, when the adjacency matrix changes smoothly over the time, the result of page rank, personalized page rank, corresponds to the first, the, the, the greatest eigen, uh, eigen vector, and it will change also smoothly. So this is a first component of, of an eigen vertex, vert, um, a vector, and it changes smoothly. So it's good. It's good for our eyes. Then we need to, we have, let's say, uh, n nodes. We have n lines. We have n factorial ways to draw the lines. Okay. So we need to find a good way to draw the lines in order to um, keep the lines that are similar together. Okay. Because if you, don't, if you have some lines that are similar in far, far away, in our stack of lines, you will don't see, uh, uh, we don't see what happens. So we can apply, for example, um, a greedy stacking algorithm. It consists to just take the first line corresponding to the center of community, and we, uh, find, we try to find another line that minimizes some distance between the lines, and we add it on the top, okay? Then you have a stack of two lines, and you have to take another line that minimizes the distance between the top of the stack or the bottom of the stack. So just take a minimum, and you add, you add, you add the lines. And what happens? In order to illustrate our approach, the approach will, uh, can be also, it was applied to Twitter data, but now I just give an illustration, okay? If you take the socio uh, patterns data, about the interactions uh, between the students. It can be naturally re represented as a link stream, and we can apply our method to smooth the data, to cut in the time slices, etc., etc. And uh, after the sorting the color lines in the good uh, fashion, we'll arrive at this kind of visualization. So, how many time I have? Maybe, maybe uh, five minutes? I'll just say three five. minutes. Three minutes? Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is uh, mm, very important. <laughs> Every line corresponds to a student, okay? To a node in the graph. In the graph you have a students, sometimes teachers. Every line corresponds to a person, let's say. We pre-selected, you can see here, but uh, this line corresponds to the, um, this line corresponds to the center of our community, okay? And then times go from left to right, and the color changes. For example, if I take this point, what does the color say me? That this, at this time stamp, uh, this person corresponding to this line have, uh, let's say, yellow probability to be in the community of node U. Okay? So what you can see is uh, for exploration. You can see if you don't have any idea what the data is, but directly you can see that there's two groups because it corresponds to two days between the interaction of students. And the student does not interact a lot between uh, during the night. So the first day, second day. And then, um, <coughs> how to say, during the meal, you don't have many interactions. The student corresponding to the same class as the selected student will have a red, uh, red card. Okay. Another student will have not so, so red. But we can also, for example, find uh, in, very interesting, uh, just looking to this picture, we can find that here you don't have any interactions. These lines correspond normally. In the first day, there's a lot of interactions okay, between these students. In the second day, there's some, uh, some sort of interaction in the first part of the day, and the second, just they disappear. And we can also remark that another group from another class, I also disappear. So this 
kind of visualization can give us the, um, the hypothesis to test. Okay? So we can see the data, what happens. Maybe uh, this part of class and this part of class was in some extra school activity or something like this. Okay? So this is a representation of complete community dynamics during two days for a graph containing uh, several hundreds of nodes. Okay? So we cannot do this just using snapshots. But you can do this with my tool, without tool. Okay. So, in the conclusion, we developed some approach uh, to temporal, called temporal density. With the main goal to visualize the community evolution for all grounds, for all time slices. In the future, we will it will be better to find some more applications, extend to global community structures, perform some online data processing, how we update our images when... Uh, because it's not so easy, because if you rerun the algorithms every time, the lines can change us. It, it's not good, so you need to guess the, the good um, order of lines. So maybe we should play with different cars, because uh, Let's say it may be not so beautiful, so you know, color depends on your domain, can depend on the meaning of the things, can culturally be different also. So this is the same representation using another color. Okay. Well, thanks for your attention. So some questions? Of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, uh, yeah thanks. Uh, interesting, yeah, we're going along the same line. So it's interesting, to, oh, yes, for the color, um, you should change the color map. So if you want to uh, convey something like a weight, yeah. an important, it's essential to use the intensity always. You can choose whatever color you want, you can even change the hue, but it has to be light for low value and dark ah, yeah, for high value always, because otherwise your visual. Uh, Visual system will not be able to tell, so you cannot compare immediately whether a value is lower than another value if it's in the hue difference. If yeah. it's in the intensity difference, you can do it very, very quickly. So here, it's hard to know which part is uh, very uh, high or very, which part which one is low. You think you know, but you don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, use intensity, and then if you use intensity, then you can also use the uh, hue for something else, which could be, for example, the dominant. Uh, cluster, if you want to, so you could you could mix uh, the two that that because ah, intensity. <coughs> so uh, I think I think this is kind of a, uh, an, an interesting approach, but you you lose the. So I guess on the left side, the color you have is the color for the cluster. Yeah, the color for the the real world cluster, mm -hmm. just to see if it corresponds to the. So you can use that for for the hue if you want, and the modul and modulate it by intensity. If you want this, this, so you have two dimensions that works yeah, yeah. Uh, for the same color. Yeah, sure. And uh, besides, so you use a con kind of complex way of computing those. So you use PageRank uh, personalized, but there's been a, some work done on the, uh, graph wavelets that can be used as well for this kind of uh, information. So take a look at the graph wavelets uh, for computing those kind of information because you have you can choose how many wavelets you want to use for. It also depends the community, yeah? Multiple eigenvalues. Okay. Interesting. Information. Because the wavelet gives you information also about the topology and not only. I mean, but yes, your measure uh, eigenvectors give you also some kind of information. Yeah, but just put the, the page around because it's a very not so popular. So, yeah, it's, it's very popular and, uh, and it gives us the one row. We can obtain another method that will give one row representing. Um, one, one column, if you want, represent one community structure. You use a different class. And the, the remark with them about the intensity is a very good one, I guess. <laughs> it's, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have uh, much experience in the visualization, but I think it uh, will be much more better. Uh, so, other question about this aesthetic uh, work? <laughs> No, I, I just to finish, I uh, wonder if a three-dimension representation would be helpful in that case. Uh, meaning that you have a, a third dimension, the nodes, also. Yeah. 
and then you maybe could look at how this evolves. It's just an idea. Uh, I think that when we add the third dimension, we should also add um, some possibility to navigate. Yeah. Navigate yeah, to, uh, to maybe go uh, in the other side to see what happens, maybe zoom some... some I mean that dynamics, you, 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 in visualization you can move things, so yeah. uh, and you can happen to see something by the, the dynamics, by the movement. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a suggestion. Yeah. Our, our, very, very our original goal was to present the static image yeah, the yeah, dynamics, so but we so also can add a more, yeah, so more interesting stuff as well. So I think it's the last of the last of the last yeah. presentation and maybe we'll, we'll have to yes. have some lunch okay. and close the Hello. before yes. lunch. Close yes, the yes. Lunch. Yes. 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 So.